Welcome to Feminine Power Time. Turn off the chatter and tune in to what matters. This is Christine Ryle, your host, and this is where we are reimagining and redesigning the way we and the world work from the inside out. The place where well-being and leadership and all kinds of good stuff, including lots of wisdom, meet to bring us to new insight, new solutions that are really in alignment for what we need at this time on the planet. And so we're going to dive into the last part in our three-part series here today called Burnout to Balance, which is really from burnout to balance to brilliance, because you can't go from burnout all the way up to radiance and brilliance and rising into your most amazing, centered, grounded self. In that middle part is the balance part. But we have such a weirdo understanding in our world around balance. It's not about, you know, holding all the plates together, holding all the parts together, holding all the pieces together, because that is E-X-H-A-U-S-T-I-N-G, exhausting. (laughs) And it doesn't work. We have been living for way too long, for decades, centuries, what I say, just treading water, trying to keep our heads above the water. And, and women especially, and men too, all humans, but I'll speak specifically to women here, have um, done a darn good job of treading water for generations. And what happened in 2020 and 21, 22, 23, like I just call it the great wake up and shake up is the tsunami hit and we all went under in different ways. And just depending on how much of a strong swimmer you were, how centered you were in yourself, how really grounded within your very being you were, depended on whether you sank, um, you swam, exhausted yourself, you kind of flailed around, (laughs) and we all had different parts of that. And that's oftentimes what's needed to go through a transformation. And that is, that is what we're in right now. We are 100% in a transformational time. And we we don't need to be scared of it. We don't need to run from it. We're certainly all going to have resistance to it. But the way I look at it is that it has a great, through the lens of the feminine, it has a great, great potential to free us all, to liberate us all from the patterns and the imprints and the mindsets and the overculture overlays that have been really kind of matrixing us in for, for so long. And so in this series, particularly, we're, we're looking at three specific kinds of overs, um, over imprints. We did over self-reliance, we did over giving, and we're going to end today with over responsibility and really taking a look and diving into what is at the root of over responsibility. It's the parts within us that take responsibility for everything, that feel it in our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our, our energy fields. And it's a big, huge source of the burnout, the overwhelm, the self-sacrifice, the the misalignment, the making choices that don't really grok with us. And also, you know, as I'm speaking today here, it's also what helps continue to recapitulate the messed up systems of of whether it's in the business world or it's in the educational world or the financial world. Like there's so many ways that we can unconsciously really step into that over responsibility where we take 110% responsibility, where we you fill the gaps um, because they're there, where you overcompensate and over caretake. All of the over giving imprints that we talked about last time are really like the the over responsibility is like the deepest root ball of all of them. And I spent a full year about two years ago with one of my women's leadership councils where the whole year was really focused on digging out that deep, deep, deep root of over responsibility. All these women had done, you know, a lot of internal personal leadership work around, you know, getting into a place of well-being and understanding things mentally. So they were really ready to, you know, as I have to say, dive in. And we came out of that year-long process where we were really really where our, our, our mission was to go in, and I just pulled this up from one of the documents that we created, is to go in and release over responsibility and the impatience that it causes within us. And embrace staying focused on our part, on your part, staying true to yourself, and moving from intuitive intelligence to navigate, reveal, and choose the wise path ahead. And 
So what we're going to do today is we're going to, I'm going to dive into some of the key, like almost like take our flashlights out if we are going down deep into the roots and just highlight with my flashlight here, illuminate some of the places that over-responsibility might be showing up for you. These are peppered throughout the Overwhelmed and Over It book. So I'll also just mention those too. So if you have your Overwhelmed and Over It book, you want to maybe grab that. If you don't have one yet, you can get it anywhere and we're going to be continuing to use it. So do get a book because it helps to have it in visual form that you can see it in. And so we're going to illuminate that. And then um, we'll turn our, our focus over to, okay, well, what do we do with that? Like, how do we actually practically do that? How do we start to release that over-responsibility, which can really cause us to make decisions and choices, big and small, in which we create things that now we have to go take care of. And we create our own too muchness and not enoughness. I was talking to a client yesterday in, in one of my leadership coaching sessions, and we, I, was, I was talking to her about um, the difference between working smart and working wise and working hard. And so, you know, the good thing is consciousness is rising and you see more and more people saying work smart, you know, not hard. And that's great. That's, 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 that's what I call like work hard is like, is like 3.0. It's like the base level or maybe like 1.0. It's the base level where we're working on fear and we're working on fear, really fear and being in power over the dominating culture. And that's been the ethos for a long time, right? If I do more, if I really put put it all in, I'm going to work hard. And if you look in Overwhelmed and Over It in, I think it's chapter seven, you'll see what that woman looks like. You don't want to do that, right? So everyone, there's lots of people now that are like, oh, great, work smart, work not hard. And it's interesting if you look at consciousness by looking at like what you might see on social media, or you might see on LinkedIn, or you might just see what people are talking about you'll start to see the elevations happening. Um, and you know, it's interesting for me because I've been talking about and sharing all of this wisdom since about 2005, six, when I really saw and was illuminated for myself where all these roots were and then have been spent the last decade studying it. And in my job, my part, and this is part of our conversation today for all of you, is to start to get really curious about where your what your part is going forward. And we've talked about this a little bit in the Align Your Design um, the series I did last year, um, and I'll mention some of the other podcasts that you can look at, because as as the as consciousness elevates. And the world elevates, we also elevate. So what you might have been doing in the past and what you might have been maybe taking responsibility for as part of your part and your work in the world, whether that's personally as a parent or a mentor or a caretaker or a partner or whatever that might have looked like, as well as in your professional life and how that how you give your gifts and your genius in that in that arena. And so where we're going um, is not about working smart. Because working smart is all about the mental realm. And what I was saying to to my client, I said, we're laughing about this. I'm like, here's a problem with working smart. Those of us that are actually you know, have a fair amount of intelligence and we're smart and we're quick and we're, we'll, we're fast, we will think ourselves um, and smart ourselves right into situations which like, oh my God, now I have more responsibility. And I've taken on way more than is my part to do. And we will figure out because we have these hearts. We want to make a difference, right? We want to. You, you want to. You want to. You want to. You want to make a difference. You want to contribute to the planet, to the people that are, you know, close to you, to the people that you are around you, to the projects that really matter to you, to the planet, the parts of the planet. And if you run in there and you try to take care of it all. A, you're not going to be effective, but B, you're going to exhaust yourself and get sick and that beautiful light of yours is going to burn out fast. And this is the time. This is the time to stop and pause and really look at, and this is my inquiry for you for this, this whole podcast today, is where might you be already taking over responsibility? And think of that in terms of people in your life, professionally and personally, individually and community, projects that you um, either have been given to bring into fruition or you yourself have initiated to bring into the world. 
needs of the planet? Where might you already be taking over responsibility? And where do you, are you in danger of stepping into that going forward into this year? Next week, we'll do our, do our, one of our power pause episodes because we're going to be right at around the March equinox. But it's a good time to start to look at that as you start to look at where, what you're going to grow this year and what you're going to tend this year and what you're going to maintain this year. And this is why impatience is so connected to over-responsibility. So just like let that land for a moment and why working smart um, versus working wise is not the way to go. Working wise is the way we want to go because working wise means we have to slow down and we have to sense in and you have to feel into what is actually the wise path that creates harmony, that creates a balance between giving and receiving, that is in alignment with timing. And that also is like that part of surrender of allowing grace to come in and help guide you. You know, the part of the piece of the smartness, and which is very connected to our intellect, which remember is not our intelligence. Intellect is only one of the four parts of intelligence. We have instinct, intuition, insight, and intellect. And it's not the most, um, it's not the brightest color. It's not the brightest crayon in, in the box. Let's just say it might be the brightest shiny, shiny one because it's most venerated in this culture, but it is not, um, it's not the one with the most depth and the most wisdom in it. We're working wise, the word wise, literally it, 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 it translates into um, to create the path of harmony. And so to do that, we have to slow down we have to get into our bodies. We got to really tune in to our hearts and use those senses of intuition and instinct. It's one of the reasons I love the Enneagram. There's, they describe the three different kinds of our intelligence centers from the mind, the body, and the heart. And then there's also what I like to say, your divine downline, the spirit part where we are... Um, where one of the teachings around grace is, you know, make no move until grace goes before you. And, you, and that's not about any specific religion. Um, if we were to just like make it about Star Wars, it's the force, you know, it's that, it's that force that is working in tandem with us to create more harmony in the world, to create a more harmonious pattern, which we've talked about in this podcast series. And it doesn't mean that we don't go through catalysts because we do. And we are, and you are, I am, we are all going through that. But as we go through this, and this isn't really my invitation today, but also as you go into this year, just really opening up to that over-responsibility and starting to ask yourself, am I taking over responsibility here? Am I giving more, that's from last week, more than I have to give? Or is this even mine to do? And then we'll wrap up today. I, I pulled out some of the the gifts that we got from that wisdom councils. One of the things in these leadership councils is we, we go in and we're together for a year or two years and we just, all this wisdom comes out. So I went back into my, my library files and I found um, six different self-sustainability stands that we came up with in that council. That's how councils work because it's the collective energy that together is has deeper level of intelligence and access to wisdom. So we'll end there today. Um, and let's just take a breath. Maybe even close your eyes and just see that word over responsibility for a moment. R E S P O N S I B I L I T Y over. I see, I always see those in caps over responsibility for the, the needs of people personal, professional, individual community, over responsibility for projects that you've been given. People might even put that responsibility on you or even yourself. You created them over responsibility for parts of the planet. And here's the first piece of wisdom I want to give you. And this one is worth writing down. It's also in page 155. And so I'm just going to go ahead and read it right from the overwhelmed and over it because it does, it just, it just bears repeating again and again and again. And this was one of the things that came out of my, of my research. Actually, it's on page 154. So here it is. The systems will take everything you will give and there will always be more to give. And so what happens is the system gets what it needs for the moment 
but your life is rarely better for all you've given. Usually you're left mentally fried, physically plumper, and you re- your relationships have suffered. And what happens, and we've all kind of been here, is now you've set up the expectations that this exchange is okay with you. You tell yourself that this was a one-time thing, and, you'll, and, you'll, and you and I both know that those responsibilities, the fires, the deadlines, the demand, they just keep coming. They keep asking for more. So just really take that in. The systems will take everything I will give them, and there will always be more. And when I speak of systems, that could be the organization you work in. It could be the team you work in. It could be the entire, if you work for a publicly held company, the entire stock market and all of the shareholders that because of the current way the system is set up, and God, I do hope that changes in our lifetime, um, it's all based on shareholder value. So you're that company, if it's publicly held, is within that. And if it's privately held, it's tied to the equity investors and what they want and need, things that you can't even see, but you're feeling the pressure from. And so that system, because that system is based on economic gain, it will just keep taking and taking and taking because it's like what the Balinese call the hungry ghosts. And that's what they call the Western people from the West because just no matter how much you eat, you always want more. And it's the, the disease of greed and not feeling enough on the inside at an internal level. So that's happening in the ecosystem, right? But you're in the ecosystem, so you don't know that because you're, you're like a fish in the ocean, and that's the ocean that we, you know, that that is a big part of what we swim in in our culture. And then you can break that down to the to the industry, to the organization and company, to your teams or your function, and then th- that's in the professional world. And then in the personal world, systems are family systems. Family systems similar but different is that if you look around at your family system or even your friend system, oftentimes we'll take on specific roles. It's called a family constellation. And I I like to think of our friends and our relationships as what's called a fractal family. And you will take on a specific role and you'll hold the energy for that. So in the ways that you might take over responsibility or you might do one of the overs over caretake or overcompensate, it will show up there as well. And so just kind of looking around at those different, you know, the ecosystem that you swim in professionally and then also the personally with your fractal families, just noticing, you know, where the systems, you might be giving more to the systems and no matter how much you give, like it kind of never seems to be enough. There's always more. And this isn't making anyone specifically wrong because the systems are not human, the humans like almost become possessed, you know, when, when the greed monster is happening, humans, they just don't even see it. This is, they don't even see that they're just driving and being led by this insatiable need to have more. And in the family system, oftentimes what's happening, and this can happen in in teams as well. I, I often have said, we work out our personal stuff if we haven't worked it out already in our work families happens all the time. And, and that's not a dig on anybody. It's just like, you should be aware of that. I remember when I was in my early thirties, I was like, Oh, uh Oh, (laughs) I think I just brought some of my mother wounding into this relationship with this person who I report to. And that is on me. And I need to re, you know, I need to rewrite that because I'm taking over responsibility, um, for her, um, you know, her happiness and her, you know, what she has going on. And it did not serve me. In fact, it, it back, it backfired on me and I didn't even know I was doing it, um, because I couldn't see it. Right. Or taking over responsibility for, I I remember I, I, I was, I was running the um, sales conference for all of the old Navy store people. And I, and I was like, you know, I, total superwoman, everything on my back. And then, you know, trying to protect my team of seven and, uh, total over responsibility and fell into a hump, you know, a lump on the other side. And so just don't say that for yourself. And, you know, one thing that you can do, this is a practice is, you know, it's asking yourself, am I plugging the holes? There's a piece in the book, it talks about don't be a plug, don't be a hole plugger, don't be a fixer, don't be a saver, and don't be a goldfish. 
The goldfish is the one who is oblivious that it's actually in the goldfish bowl and it just keeps getting fed fish flakes and it thinks it's all safe and it's all secure. And you just keep giving, 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 giving until one day from all the stress, your belly up. And then they put you into the, into the, into the toilet and flush you down and replace you. So just thinking of that, like, where might you be, you know, putting on the cape of the saver or the fixer or the hole plugger or the, or the goldfish or the hugger, you know, I just was watching this with, with Noah today is a friend We have a friend that's in, um, some emotional turmoil and intensity around a relationship that's disintegrating. And he's, you know, he's sad and he's broken up about it, but he won't really receive any help from it. And, you know, Noah reached out to him and he's like, you know, if you want to talk, like I'm here. And he's like, no need to call, you know, and then just kind of like, you know, shared his experience. And, and Noah was going to send him a text today, you know, just like, gosh, I'm just so, you know, I'm really feeling, you know, how broken hearted you are and da 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 going on and on. And I'm like, Noah, don't send that. I'm like, give him his space. You're taking, you're tapping into what he's going through. And, and there's some over caretaking in that, but there's over responsibility in that too, for, you know, really Noah wanting to be a good friend to this person and knowing that this person doesn't have a lot of friends. And so he's, you know, he, in Noah, has been so fortunate being part of the Mankai project. He has like all these, they call themselves, you know, they, they refer to each other as like a brother, not in a weird way, but in a, not in a weird culty way, but in a good way. And they're so present for each other and there's so much camaraderie there. And then, you know, him wanting his friend to have that too. So we can do it with the best intentions. It's not, this is, this is like the tricky part of it. It's like, you're like, but this, I'm doing it with good intentions. I'm doing it with good intentions. But here goes the second part and the question I want you to ask yourself. And this is like, you know, if you think you might be having over responsibility, asking yourself, is this my part? Or am I taking on more than my part because I can sense the need in the system? Or I can sense the need, you can sense the need in the person. And, and this comes from those deeper fears of like, well, if I don't step in, it might all fall apart. Or if I don't reach out the hand, they may, you know, fall apart. And this is where the intellect can't help you in this way. This is about you having a deep connection to your heart, to your body, and to your intellect, all three. So that your intuition can ask, is this mine to do? So think of something right now. Think of a person, a project, or some part of the planet that you really have a passion for, or you have compassion for, or you have um, just a, this, like you can feel the need, especially for those of you who your intuition is, is empathic. Um, or you, and you really can feel the feelings of other people, or for those of us that have kinesthetic as one of our major ones, we can feel it with our bodies, especially the pressure. Um, or for any of you who are what I like to call wise women or wise men, where you can see things like, you know, it's like I was saying, I've been talking about this crazy more and more and more culture and the roots of burnout for almost 20 years now. And people looked at me like I had seven heads, you know, like back then. And, and now it's like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, we should talk about growth and reimagining growth because it actually, you know, this is crazy. And it was, you know, I, I saw that 20 years ago and I'm not the only person. Many of us have that ability and it can be frustrating. I'm thinking of a doctor that I do some work with and she often is seeing the things that are wrong in the, the, environment she works in. And then people look at her like she has seven heads, but she's also moved systems and ecosystems because now they don't look at her like she has seven heads. Now they lean in and say, oh, tell us more. Um, and that's another part of this part. So just looking at one of those things, like a person, a project, a need of a planet, and just like take a step back and look at it. Look at the person, look at the planet part, or just close your eyes for a moment. And let's just drop into our bodies. And sense this thing that matters to you or this person or this part, this need of the planet, project. And just let yourself sense into the need that's there. Let yourself sense into what doesn't work for you, what maybe makes you angry, or what, it, how you see it could be different. 
Just take a breath and let yourself slow down. See if your shoulder blades can even relax. And if you can't close your eyes, you can still let your body relax and really open up into this. We're sensing in the second phase of sustainable decision making and co creation, intuition, feel and sense. So as you feel that need, you feel perhaps the damage or the harm or the possibility that could happen. Just make the inquiry right now, what's mine to do? What's my part in this? And what's not my part in this? So let yourself just dial in first on the part. It's almost like you should be able to kind of feel it in your solar plexus and about an inch above your navel. This is a, a very, this is very embodied. If you let yourself really feel it in your body, in your heart, and just let your mind open without having to make a thought, but open up to allow that deeper insight to come in. It's that insight of your higher mind, your higher consciousness, what's called the super consciousness, the quantum field, grace. That's why we do our daily practices presence practices. So just feeling in what is my part. And maybe also then you can even ask what part, you know, let your mind have a moment. What part am I not sure is it my part? Or what's the part that I feel like I can't let go for whatever reason? Sometimes that part is, you know, because we've created something and we don't want to let go of it. And we took responsibility for something at some time. And it's hard to let go. This is just very natural even as in parenting, right? When the, the child is ready to go out on their own in their late teens and early 20s, um, there's those parts, you know, that still remember holding a baby who was really dependent upon you. And so we have that with so many things in our lives. And so just seeing if you can presence, if I let go of the parts that I've had, or I've let go of the responsibility I've taken. What am I afraid would happen? I let go. It's even like letting your hands go, letting the grip go. What am I afraid would happen? You might, if you're visual, your intuition, you might see a picture of it. You might feel it in your body. You might hear something if you're more auditory. Or what are you afraid wouldn't happen is another thing. If I, you know, take a step back and I just really do my part now forward, what am I afraid won't happen? And again, see where you might be taking over responsibility. That over responsibility doesn't let other people step into their part and also cuts off the divine. So if you, if you, if you think about it and you kind of imagine that we're all standing, like there's a, there's a part, there's something that you're passionate about that's in the center of the circle, similar to the council where you imagine people standing in all eight directions and you're all holding, like in, the, in grade school, we'd hold a parachute and we'd up, it'd go up and it would go down. Or imagine you're all holding strings in your left and right hands that are all meeting at the center. And you all have a part to play with this, with this thing that's at the center, whether it's a personal family thing or relationship thing, or it's a, it's a bigger thing on the planet, or it's something that's happening in your professional life. And look around, I mean, like there's these other people. And some people have been there all along and they want to elevate, but they can't if you're standing there. And notice, you know, where you might be not a lot, you know, like not letting go because you've stood there. This often happens when we change generations and cycles, right? Where you're not the 30-year-old, you might be the 50-year-old, or you're not the 50-year-old, but you're the 70-year-old. These kind of 20-year cycles, these bigger 20 counts. We often think only in decades, but 20 counts is, a, is, is generational. And so we, we continue to elevate, we continue to evolve. And then just tuning into, like, what is my part going forward? 
And what's aligned to your design at this point in your life that's going to support you, that's going to sustain you? And where is the ease for you? Where is the path of ease? In the, in the Taoist I Ching tradition, they, um, the core teaching is ease. Easeful is right. I was talking to a friend of mine who also works in the realm of leadership, and she was telling me, which this is good, there's a, a pretty renowned university that's studying um, the science of ease to prove that easeful is right versus hard. And it just made me chuckle because I was like, well, the I Ching has been talking about this for <laughs> ever. And, you know, this is embedded in Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. And, and it's like, of course, it's like, do we need to have a study to prove that easeful is right? And, um, and it's interesting how much the mind needs that right? Because we don't trust it. And again, that's not any one person, but we should, we have to have like a chuckle about that. Like what, like imagine all that energy <laughs> could be used to actually just go live that way and develop the practices um, around it. And why, why do we not believe that? Because it's so deeply imprinted in here. And gosh, if I, if I let go a little, someone else might step in. So this is like the funny part where we have to lighten up and laugh at ourselves as, um, as humans. Okay, so here's the, we're going to, we're about a little over halfway through here. So I just want to mention this other last part. It's another wisdom bite on how to make sure that you're not taking over responsibility. Focus on the receptive ones. Focus on the receptive ones. Focus, like if you could tattoo that, not on your forehead, because you wouldn't see it, but like somewhere where you could see it. I actually wrote it on a piece of paper and it's sitting in front of my desk. Um, don't waste your energy and life force fighting and ranting and focusing on what you can't influence um, and go where you are. Go where you're invited. Go where the energy is. Go where the flow is. This is not the time to have to push the rock up the hill and because um, the momentum of the ages is behind us. Uh, and that is something that is just happening in the energy that we're in right now. And, in, and there's all kinds of chaos that's happening within it and craziness and all of that, but there is momentum. And so if you focus on where the energy is taking you and where the receptive ones are, you're not going to take over responsibility because those people don't need you to. And, and, and that is, um, you know, that's a, there are other people who will, you know, focus on the people who are not receptive. But if you're tuned in here right now, um, my sense is that Focusing on the receptive ones is going to do what we, for, for all of us, is going to do what, what our, one of our cornerstones is to do less, receive more, achieve a greater impact. That's the new model for growth and success in business and personal life and society. Do more, do less, receive more, achieve a greater impact. So look at that for your life. And then as we're going into this next you know, this next part of the year, here's a very practical example, a thing to do. Look around through the lens of the over-responsibility and all the parts we just talked about of, and making sure like, where is the system taking, 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 you're like giving, giving, giving. Where are you doing more than your part and not your part? And where are you not, you know, not letting go or only valuing your part if you have done, um, you know, big stuff. I did a, there are two podcasts, 181R, which is about 181, which is about power leaks, and 217, which is about getting aligned to your part. So you could go listen to those if you want to go deeper into that realm. And then the third one that I mentioned, which is focus on the receptive ones and don't waste your energy ranting and raging into the wind, um, trying to convince people of things. All, te all teachers, the greatest teachers know it's like you, you, you show a different way and then those that are ready won't follow you. Well, I mean, if that's important to you, um, I don't, it's more like they follow the wisdom. It's one of the reasons why, like, ugh, I, I'm like, I don't want followers. <laughs> I mean, I want, I want to be connected to people. I want to be an inspiration. I'm happy to be a teacher or a way shower or a pathfinder um, you know, an evolutionary thinker, um, but I don't want people to follow me. Uh, one of my teachers once said, he's like, I didn't come here to make followers. I came here to help create teachers. 
And that's what I feel like for myself is, am I here to help people remember who they are and the power that they have with inside of themselves? I'm not here to empower anybody. I'm here to help people find their own source of power and wisdom. And from that point, light up and step into their full selves in this world, heart open, connected, savoring life and being the elevators and creators of this world. And so we do that together. I'm right here on this journey with all of you. Um, And that's how it works. And so one of the things you can do then is write these three words down. Stop, start, and shift. Stop, start, and shift. So as you look through the lens of over-responsibility, and I would take in also the other two, the over-self-reliance and the over-giving, this whole series, and ask yourself, okay, going forward into this next cycle, what am I going to stop? Like, definitely need to stop that. What is being called, what can I start that's actually in alignment, getting these imbalances into alignment? And what is calling for a shift? And make a list of those three things, stop, start, and shift. And you will get a lot of really good insight. And then come back next week for the power pause and um, we'll tune in a little bit more. This is also, I want to make an uh, announcement here before we do the last part here of the self-sustainability stands, which I'm going to share the six of them and have you just listen to each one and pick one that you're, you want to you wanna play with. So one of the ways we break through these imprints and the imbalances that, that are, are at the root of this over-self-reliance, over-giving, and over-responsibility um, is we, it takes 40 days to break a habit. 120 days to start to put a new root in place. Think of like planting a new plant, how it takes like, you know, a while for it to re-root into its pot. So four months and then a thousand days to make it who you are, three years. So one of the things that we do and I do every year at the Equinox is I hold a 40-day practice. It's called Burnout to Balance. It's had different names over the years, but I've been running it since 2013. I was actually just going through my website because we're getting ready to move my website server over and I have like 11,000 images. <laughs> I've got my web designer, Nico, who I love dearly. She's like, dude, you got to get some of those images off. So it's been cool because I'm going through and like pulling, like deleting images I don't need that were on there from 10 years ago and looking at myself and my work from a decade ago and and actually finding some gems. I'm like, oh, I don't even know if I have that file. I found a really great poster from the Love Club where we made about self-empowerment and we're using some of that stuff with um, with college um, girls, this, girls this, um, this year testing some stuff um, with one of the women in our wise council. So it was really good, you know, to like go and look through all of that stuff. And this, this is this piece of like this, these imprints need a container to, to break and you can't change what you can't see. So the burnout to balance practice starts this year on April 14th, runs for 40 days. It's like a retreat. You do it from your house. You can learn out more uh, about it is burnout to balance practice.com. This year, I'm going to be doing some new, I'm going to be upgrading the video teachings. We meet um, on day one, day 20, day 40. It's all about creating a sustainable rhythm to your life and resetting your patterns and breaking through um, the over, you know, we choose an over every year and we break through it. And by day 36, I always get a golden nugget and I'm like, oh my God, I, can't, I didn't even know that was there. So you are invited to join us. It's from burnouttobalancepractice.com and um, we uh, start on the 14th of April and it will hold you um, and uh, I like to say it's simple yet mighty. So check it out and come and join us. And um, all right, so let's, um, let's do these self-sustainability stands, shall we? Okay. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the six self-sustainability stands that came out of the deeper work that we did in the Women's Leadership Council, the Elevate Women's Leadership Council, two years ago, when we really got and pulled out that over-responsibility uh, route. It was so great to see how like some women left toxic work environments they had been in for five years and couldn't, you know, extricate themselves. Others stayed in the same environments that they were in and jobs that they were in, but changed their relationship within it and now are finding peace um, and happiness in it. Um, Others um, really opened up to not just focus so much on work and on creating a whole life. There's so many changes that happened um, they were so empower- powerful. So I'm really excited to be able to give you the quintessentialization of these six. 
So as I read these to you, you can listen to these as a meditation or you can just listen. And then I'm going to invite you to choose one. And so just like you're looking at these overs that you're releasing, whenever we're working with an imprint like this, what you have to do is you have to replace it with something else. Else it's just like a hole that doesn't have anything in it. And then the weeds are going to get in there. So this is like why an overwhelming over it. There's the 12 imprints that I found. And I said, we're releasing this or unlearning this is another way. And then we're embracing this or we're learning this. So it's like unlearn, learn, release, embrace. And that's the way this, um, that's the way this works. So I'm going to, we're going to do the embrace one. All right, so here we go. Self-sustainability stands for releasing over responsibility. And the way these stands work is that in the moment when you sense that you may be taking over responsibility and about to act from the over responsibility, you grab onto this stand instead and from a deep place of self-advocacy and believing and trusting that the universe is working to create bigger harmony and that there might be catalytic things that happen and hard things that happen for people. But if you, you know, it's like a butterfly coming out of its cocoon, whether it's a team, a person, an organization, whatever, if you don't let that butterfly come out, you're going to rip its wings. It has to be able to fly on its own. So choose which one you want to play with. Number one, I consider what is needed and what I have to give before I proceed. I consider what is needed and what I have to or desire to give before I proceed. Two, if the support and space is not there, I'm not moving forward at full speed. If the support and space is not there, I'm not moving forward at full speed. Three, I stay in co-creation to reveal and proceed on the wise, harmonious path. I stay in co-creation to reveal and proceed on the wise, harmonious path. I stay present to the real needs and stay focused on my part. I stay present to the real needs and stay focused on my part. Five. I remember that grace is at the center of all challenges. I remember that grace is at the center of all challenges. And six, I glide from grace. I move from strength. I glide from grace. I move from strength. I will put these on my blog post. I'll try to put them in the podcast notes, but sometimes the podcast doesn't it only allows me for so many characters. So I will um, put this into my, um, I'll put it into the post for sure on my blog posts or on my, um, on the, on the, on my, on my, on my website, <laughs> Christina Rilo. So if you go to this episode, you'll see them on there, but choose one of those and take that in with your Google eye, you're open, you're, you're not your Google eyes, but your wise woman or wise being eyes of looking at, okay, with over responsibility and the over self-reliance and the over giving, because all of those things are connected at the root ball. And then take those in and kind of work with it and play with it. And when you feel yourself about to make the choice that is going to screw you over and cause you to go into the imbalance, you pause and you say this to yourself, and that's how you find You slow yourself down and you get into your center and then you can really ask of like, okay, like what would enough look like here? What's mine to do? And make some of those deeper inquiries. And then when you're connected to your intuition and your inner wisdom, it'll know. And then, you know, like we talk about here, if you don't, we we can't be a hundred percent on our own all the time. You got to make sure that you have your wisdom council around you, that you're in communities and councils of other people who can reflect to you. I have two, I have a wise woman tea today with my friend Shasta. I have wisdom council with my friend, my friend Eric today. Um, We meet eight times a year. My friend Shasta and I meet once a month. Um, I have my wisdom council that meets twice a month. Like I have like multiple layers of counsel and connection here. And one thing I can say for those of you that don't have it, most of the women that were in the Elevate Women's Leadership Council, they didn't have it either. 
especially for women, this is true for men too, is like we have deep wounds around sisterhood and brotherhood. And we, you know, we, we isolate or we just like have a, a couple few people, you know, around us that we trust. And that's not how this is going to work going forward. And, and so just kind of, you know, start to open up to that. And, uh, and you just open up to like, okay, like, give me the connections that are going to support me and that I can be part of that are operating at the level that you're operating at now and that you're elevating into. As we elevate, yogi, yogis always say, when you elevate your friends, your fashion, your food, and we added your fun will change. And um, that's okay. This is the time for elevation and liberation. And it could be, as the, as the Hopi elders said in one of their missives, this could be a good time. Look around for those around you and keep your head above the water. <laughs> Maybe even float. That's what the Taoists would say. Float. <laughs> Don't try to run the rock over. Go around it. So we'll be back again next week here for, the, for the, uh, our, our Equinox Power Pause. But go out there and see what you can see and share this podcast. That's my ask on how you can you know, be part of helping me and this work get into the world, share the podcast with another person, share notes on some of this stuff and support each other. There right there would be a person who could support you in all of it. And I um, also want to thank those that are leaving reviews. That helps a lot. Just to know that you're out there and does algorithmy like things. So you could just go to your podcast uh, show the show on your podcast app and then scroll down and there should be some stars and a way to write a review. So writing a review and what this does for you would be wonderful. And um, there'll be more ways that, um, that I'll be sharing as we kind of go into this year, um, especially for those of you that work with teams and organizations or have professional organizations. This is where I'm focused at this coming year. I'm doing four-month women's leadership cohorts and councils for groups and organizations around all of this work. And it's um, very exciting and other good stuff. I'm still looking possibly at what a retreat would be. And so we're coming. There's There are things. So just... Just I'm in my own process right now to make sure I don't take over responsibility and um, that I can release what I have said yes to and been in relationship to and focus on my part without without letting go of the things that matter to me in a way that, um, yeah, I'll, I'll share more about that. There's a, I'm not ready to share all of that yet and I'm because I'm in my process. And there's a great teaching that says, you know, when you're still in your process, not time to share. Share after. And that's... Um, where we'll be headed to um, in April. Okay, my loves, I'll see you soon. Much love.